Hello and welcome back to Planet Zoo where uh, I try to recreate the Antwerp Zoo or Zoo of Antwerpen as you can see here in Dutch. Um, at the end of last episode I promised to show you the interior of uh, the uh, monkey building here. It's not entirely finished. Um, for example uh, this entrance bit here needs uh, to be refined a bit because there's a path... oh god. There's a path going to the uh, winter garden over here as well. So, but I'll uh, only be able to do that once I've actually visited, visited the zoo and got some good looks at how this area looks. Um, the family tree of monkeys and humans and stuff like that over here. I haven't done that as well, or either. But over here, as you can see, I have uh, these windows uh, or these galleries lined up already. I have done these um, ex uh, habitats or exhibits uh, over here. But on this side, um, if I actually press play, you can see that I have done these and there's actually monkeys in here. Uh, so yeah, this side I have completed and the animals from the outside habitats can actually go in there and run around and climb and stuff. Over here as well for the mandrills, um, there's currently not one in here, I think, okay there's not one in here. Oh, there, there is one. As you can see, um, <laughs> they are glitching all over the place. They can actually get in there and uh, walk around and climb on, on these uh, stuff, on this stuff. So, so that is the monkey building. Now, um, let's start the time lapse on the koala building. And oh my god, the camera movement. So let's have a look at the time lapse uh, of the koala building. See you there. In today's episode I'll be working on this little building which houses the koalas and tree kangaroos. Uh, tree kangaroos are not in Planet Zoo but koalas are so we will just use this entire building for the koalas. Unfortunately there's not much history to talk about regarding this building. Uh, it was built in 1898 and designed by Emil Tielens and was originally intended for Congo peafowls. Uh, another one of those species which came to the Antwerp Zoo from the Congo Free State. Uh, since 2015, however, the building uh, is used for koalas. So I'll put some pictures on screen right now that I used as a reference pictures um, of the koala building. Uh, nothing too difficult uh, here in this build. Uh, the most difficult part, I think, uh, were was the roof. Uh, but yeah. Uh, speaking about the roof, I used basically the same tactic as uh, with the um, the pangolin building. As you can see, I have these like the the white um, metal clad uh, roof, and then uh, I put the thatched roof on top of that, basically to hide the inside of the thatched roof. Uh, if you look inside of the building, which is gonna be important for this one because there's like these little uh, pieces or uh, like entries where habitats, as you can see here, I'm building them right now, like uh, entrances where ha um, visitors can go inside and basically get a little bit closer to the koalas. So over here I'm working on these triangular bits. Um, in real life they're not that triangular, I think they have a flat top. But um, yeah, in the game there's not really something to replicate that. Uh, Basically, these are the entrances to uh, the the viewing bits inside of the building, um, and can, the guests basically can go inside uh, to have a closer look at the koalas there. And uh, these entrances had automated doors, and I first tried to have like these uh, automated doors that were opened by having this first section that I'm doing now and then basically copying that, moving it a bit back uh, and forward. But I, I, th <laughs> I just thought the guests are already gonna collide with it so much. I don't want, have, uh, don't want to have them collide uh, all the time with everything. So I just decided to keep them open. And then I moved on to uh, the side he here and uh, I think right now I'm doing the roof, yes. And in an earlier episode I said well, that uh, once you do the roof like on your buildings everything comes together like quite nicely and that is uh, the, the case here as well um, like once you 
take the time, put in the roof. Your building, like, almost looks finished already, but it, of course it's not. And then uh, I moved on to the the back wall here. Um, this back wall, uh, like, separates the actual habitat from, like, the like inside habitats where the animals can have a little bit more privacy but of course uh, that is where we will put the staff pots uh, and the entrance to this habitat and also uh, like a, a small little uh, vet uh, not a veterinary building but like a the thing where they uh, prepare the food and stuff like that so that will go behind this wall here um then um I also, uh, like right here, I'm now going to put in some doors. Fortunately, the game only allows you to have like one entrance to a uh, habitat uh, at once. It would be really great if they uh, changed that, like front frontier. If you're listening, probably not, but if you can, like have the the option open for multiple entrances to one habitat, because that really does make sense that you can't do that in the game. Over here we moved on to these, uh, like the things I talked earlier, earlier about, uh, that the, the guest can go inside there and have a closer look at the koalas, uh, using the same wooden pieces uh, as usual there. Nothing too special. But yeah, then I put in uh, these uh, wooden fences as well. They are like, uh, I, I don't know how you would call that, but like these overhanging bits on every piece of the... Uh, of the of the of the inside there um and then i started working on these uh, trims there uh, to basically connect the glass to the uh the, the, the roof there the inside of the roof uh, basically went throughout the entire habitat to do that uh nothing really difficult there but it adds a lot and then over here i'm adding these angled uh wooden pieces for uh, where the roof is or where the glass roof is and basically copied that over and that made it uh, really look nice uh, from the outside if you look from the top uh, inside uh, it really looks nice um, over there and then I started on the other side on the right side there is like this little uh, toilet area but I didn't really have good reference pictures of that area so um, I might have to go back and uh, change that later once I've actually been able to visit the zoo. But yeah, now we're adding or continuing uh, these uh, little trims here. And <laughs> like to compare to Minecraft. Like uh, imagine in Minecraft you have a wooden block and a cobblestone block next to each other. Like you want to have something in between them, um, a little more, bit more detail, like a, a little bit more depth, depth as well. To keep them separated and to keep that connected connecting texture from looking uh, bad but yeah these trims are really great to do that right now i am moving on to uh, like this toilet area as i uh, mentioned earlier it's basically these uh, the same style as the other building i had to keep it a bit smaller than it actually is in real life uh, because of the path we have running there towards the okapi uh, enclosure uh, but yeah, adding in the roof and stuff like that, <laughs> nothing too too special here. Uh, I actually decided to go for the metal clad roof there, but yeah. And then we have this, like, just a flat wall here on the end uh, of that side. And we have the stone, uh, like, okay, sorry. Uh, I actually moved that back a bit more because we have to have some plants in front of that uh, but the path is already quite close so yeah as i said there's like a little toilet area there and i just put in some toilets and a path towards uh like the staff entrance to the habitat and stuff like that um i as i said i don't really know how this uh, area looks because i didn't have any pictures of it uh, but i might go back and change that I put the door in there and as you could see there I <laughs> basically pushed it back into the wall so you only have the door handle <laughs> pushing out there. It's like an, a really nice trick if you want to have custom doors. Just use the the regular doors, push them back inside the wall. You have like your little door handle uh, on there. Yeah, over here um, I decided to go back and uh, 
change that path up a bit I think yeah, these walls were a bit strange it didn't really match up uh, with what is actually there in uh, real life because I think the roof curves back in but yeah it's not really possible to do that in planet zoo so basically this is like the outside perimeter of the zoo and that is what people see uh, on the street if you are outside of the zoo and added in these trims there forgot the wall here so i put that in uh, to have it uh, completely um, basically the outside is now completely done and I moved on to the uh, inside. I wanted to have these uh, eucalyptus trees um, to have some enrichment for them. I don't think the zoo has, like the actual zoo doesn't have eucalyptus trees in there. I know they like they um, like they breed their own eucalyptus for the uh, no, well, breed is maybe a bad word, but like they plant their own eucalyptus uh, to give to the koalas. Like they don't have to import uh, that from Australia or, or anything. They actually uh, make the, make it themselves. But yeah, we have this climbing area, which is actually for the tree kangaroos. Uh, and then on the other side, we have uh, a climbing area for the koalas. But uh, this is going to be one big habitat. Uh, so this is the area where the koalas are usually uh, can usually be seen in the actual zoo. Basically just some climbing gear, uh, some dead trees as well. Okay, we're now nearing the end of uh, the time lapse here. And uh, so let's actually go to the uh, live, go live game and have a look at the finished product. See you there. We're now live in the game. Unfortunately, with all the trees and such, uh, <laughs> there's not much I could show you. Uh, in terms of a full frontal view of this uh, building, but I can try to squeeze in here. Uh, let me press T. And let us have a look at this nice little koala building. Um, I had to split or uh, remove the split in the middle here uh, because there was like something weird going on. And let me press play. So, yeah, we have these koalas. Um, I think there's three of them in here. They have this nice little tree to climbing here and over here uh, a bunch of a whole bunch of <laughs> different branches and stuff like that and visitors can actually go inside here uh, to view the koalas um, and they actually are doing that as you can see here and over here as well so yeah, there's a piece of path here which they can use then we have some uh, toilets in here, but I did not really spend time decorating that much, so yeah. Uh, probably because I'll also have to change this, I didn't really have any pictures of this area, so I just improvised, so I might have to change this, uh, how this looks here. Um, in terms of next episode, um, I will work on the building that sits here. It's like a little historical aviary and uh, they currently house parrots. Um, so that's what we will do next uh, episode. And then probably after that, I may do a tour of the zoo, what we already have. Then we start moving on to this direction of the zoo. Probably do this part here first because it's right at the entrance. So it might be good to have something finished here before we actually move on to the rest of the zoo. Now also some good news, uh, in Belgium the zoos are uh, allowed to reopen in I think it's a next week Saturday, is it the 13th? It's the 13th of February, I think that's next week, next week Saturday. So then the zoos are um, allowed to reopen and I will probably uh, visit the Adverb Zoo in the near future. So then I'll have, uh, I'll be able to fix some details that are that I got wrong and stuff like that. But yeah, I have that to look forward to. Now, if you like this uh, video, please consider give it, giving it a like. And if you want to see more, uh, press that subscribe button. See you in the next episode. Bye.